Today we're gonna to go ahead and continue with our Space Invaders app and we're gonna look at how we can move our saucer sprite. So in order to get to our Space Invaders app, we're gonna to need to go ahead and open a new tab or window in our browser and go to appinventor.mit.edu. From here, you'll log in using your Google student email address. Go ahead and click on Create Apps and then click on your Space Invaders project to continue building your app. So we're gonna go ahead and make this a little bit more challenging by changing the position of the saucer. Now, when the bullet collides with the saucer, we're gonna change the location of the saucer from its current location. We want the saucer to move along both the X and the Y value. So we need to modify the bullet collide with event handler. We can do this by using a random block and subtracting the canvas height from the saucer sprite's height. So let's go head over to our MIT App Inventor and look at how we can make this modification. Once you're in your Space Invaders app, make sure you head over to your block view. From here, we're going to need to go ahead and locate our when bullet rocket collide with event hammer. Previously, we went ahead and set that saucer sprite on the X value to randomly select an integer anywhere from zero to the canvas width minus the saucer sprites width. We're going to need to do the same thing for our Y axis, but instead of using the width, we're going to use the height. So we're gonna go ahead and grab our set block and we're gonna right click and duplicate. From here, we're gonna to need to go ahead and change the X value over to Y. We'll then need to go ahead and change the canvas width to canvas height. Last but not least, we then need to take the saucer sprites width and change that to the saucer sprites height. Once we do that, go ahead and place that set block above that call hit saucer place out. Now that we've updated that, our saucer sprite will not only move left to right, but up and down as well. To make things even more difficult, we're also gonna go ahead and change the position of the saucer when a timer goes off. So when the clock one timer goes off, we want the saucer sprite to randomly move along the X axis. Now just keep in mind that we've already set our clock one timers interval for 3000 milliseconds. This means that it should change every three seconds. Let's go back to our MIT App Inventor and look at how we would program our clock one timer event handler. Now for our clock one timer, we're simply gonna go ahead and duplicate some of our code that we've already included in the when bullet rocket collide with event handler. Remember when creating that event handler, we've already told our saucer sprite to move on the X axis from a random integer anywhere from zero to anywhere from the canvas width minus the saucer sprite's width. We're going to go ahead and just call this to occur every three seconds by using a clock. So we're going to go ahead and navigate and bring in a brand new event handler under our clock one. From here, we're going to go ahead and call our when clock one timer. Once we have that place, we can simply go up to that bullet rocket collide with and find the saucer sprite X value. From here, just right click and duplicate that whole block of code. And we're going to go ahead and drop it into our clock one timer. Now what's gonna happen is every 3000 milliseconds or three seconds, our saucer sprite should move randomly along that X axis. Now you will also need to program your clock two timer in order for the bullet to be released from the saucer. This control is very similar to the event handler we used for when the rocket sprite was touched. Use the clock two event handler to start your code. Remember, we need the bullet to travel in a downward movement. Now, in order to program our when clock to timer event handler, we're gonna mimic a lot of the code that's already been written in that when rocket sprite touched event handler. So what we're gonna need to do is just take all of that code inside of that rocket sprite touched event handler and simply duplicate it for now. The easiest way to do this is to go ahead and click on that when rocket sprite touched event handler, right click, select duplicate. Here you'll notice that we'll get an error message because we have two similar event handlers. Go ahead and take all the code within that event handler out. From there, go ahead and simply delete that second when rocket sprite touched event handler. Now, we're gonna go ahead and replace that with our clock two timer. So find your clock two component, and we're gonna go ahead and bring in that event handler called when clock two timer. From here, we can go ahead and drop our code into that block. Now we do need to make some modifications here. So be very careful when changing some of this around to make sure that it is addressing all of the correct sprites. The first thing we need to do is change our bullet rocket. We're gonna go ahead and change that over from the rocket to our bullet saucer. 
The next thing we'll need to go ahead and do is change our rocket sprite to saucer sprite and rocket sprite width to saucer sprites width. We'll still go ahead and divide that by two. Now for our Y axis, we'll change our rocket sprite over to saucer sprite. And instead of subtracting this by 20, we're gonna need to subtract this by negative 90. Once we change that, it's now time to address our visibility, speed, and heading. We'll go ahead and change that bullet rocket to bullet saucer for visibility. We'll change the bullet rocket speed over to bullet saucer. We'll keep the speed at 30 pixels per second. And last but not least, we'll change our bullet rocket heading over to bullet saucer heading. And that 90 is going to become a negative 90 since we want this to move in a downward movement. Now, once you have programmed your clock to timer, it's time to go ahead and test your app. As you can see, we're ready to go ahead and test our app. We've added the clock one and clock two timer, which allows our saucer to fire a bullet as well as move along the X and Y axis. Now, one thing we'll notice is that as we fire towards that saucer, when hit, it will now move on the X and Y axis. Now, we still do need to clean up our code as you notice that as that saucer fires a bullet, it's still not colliding with the rocket. So we're going to need to clean up our code a little bit in order to make that rocket sound when hit. Also, when we select the reset button, our score and miss labels will reset, but the saucer does not go back to the original location. So we'll need to clean up our code in our next activity.